Hello, everyone, and welcome to the U.S. and Canada Mobile Operator Benchmark Review and Outlook webcast. Mine is Allison Crawford, and I will be your host for today's webinar. Last year, we have engaged with our readers through our quarterly webinars to provide you with additional insight into the state of the networking and mobility market. We have questions and discussions, and we're excited to continue to connect you with the MP practice as it grows. Before we get started, I want to let you know of a small change in presenters. As many are aware, flu season is upon us, and Eric Costa, who heads up the U.S. and Canada Mobile Operator Benchmark, is out today, but his colleague Scott Dennehy is stepping in to do the presentation for the webcast. Before this over to Scott, there are a few logistics I'd like to cover. First, we will be recording today's session and posting it on our YouTube site, TB channel. We encourage you to visit this channel to watch this presentation or any of the others we've posted. We'd like to hear opinions and thoughts on the materials we're presenting. Please send any questions or comments to the Q&A or chat function. Scott and Mo uh, will address them at the end of the presentation. Or if you'd like to set up a client inquiry for more detailed discussion, you reach out directly to Eric to set up the webinar at the end of the webinar to set up the discussion. Uh, third, we'll send out the slides to everyone registered for today's webcast within 24 hours of the conclusion of the webinar. You can also find the slides as well as our thought leadership pieces, other webinars, and commentaries on SlideShare at www.slideshare.net backslash TBR under market underscore insight. Let me introduce Scott Dennehy and Michael Sullivan Trainer. Scott has been covering the enterprise network infrastructure and services space for the past 17 years and leading our research coverage of Network Infrastructure Services, or NIS. Michael Sullivan is our resident expert in TIS, LTE, broadband, SIG access, wireless access, backhaul, OSS, BSS, smartphone, tablets, and NDM. Together, this insight has helped our clients improve their strategic go-to-market plans and market position in the telecom vertical. With that, I'd like to hand this over to Scott and Michael. Okay, uh, Michael, thank you very much, uh, Allison. Uh, before um, Scott proceeds with the uh, third quarter U.S.-Canada mobile benchmark, um, I'd like to provide an overview of TR um, and uh, some of the activities that we do. TR uh, provides a set of uh, reports and benchmarks that are unique for their holistic analysis of uh, leading operator businesses. On our benchmark, we cover uh, the top players in the United States and Canada, including Verizon, AT&T, Sprint uh, in the U.S. and Bell, Telus, and Rogers in Canada. Uh, reporting is based on financial modeling that provides better understanding of the operator business models. Uh, provide both a syndicated report that provides a variety of figures that are reported and, and modeled, and serves as an op indicator of operator business performance. Um, and really focuses on where the operator is making their investments uh, and uh, how the results look for that given quarter. We also provide uh, reports and webinars um, based on what uh, the, our clients require, uh, so we can look more deeply into the organizational structure and the infrastructure spend uh, of the operators um, and provide um, syndicated reports that address the wireline and wireless uh, performance tricks um, and as well as uh, overall financial performance and go-to-market analysis. Um, uh, we look at the strategic objectives uh, of the operator um, on a core basis to really understand where the entire uh, market movement is headed and how the different players are uh, competing against each other to achieve uh, success in the market and evolve their business models. Uh, and with that, I will uh, hand it over to um, Scott uh, to talk about how the uh, 11 operators in, in North America have been performed in the third quarter against these, uh, these trends and business models. Scott? Good afternoon, everyone, and, and thanks for joining today's presentation. Uh, today we'll discuss three of the key wireless trends that operators dealt with in the third quarter of 2012 and how these trends will continue to impact the industry in 2013. Uh, LED deployment, shared data plans, and a shift toward connected devices help propel revenue and subscriber growth for the wireless operators in the third quarter of 2012 and will remain the key drivers of growth for the next two years. So three of the major themes that we identified for this quarter's U.S. and Canada mobile operator benchmark. 
Uh, first, discuss a transition that operators are beginning to see where, where subscribers are no longer the main focus. Tens are taking their place in a market controlled by increasing data consumption. Transition over to the prepaid segment, which reported low additions in the third quarter. We've got the impact of continued market saturation on both the industry and specific operators. And finally, I'll hit on the spending habits of the operators, specifically how and where the operators are investing the, their resources to upgrade the networks. So we'll focus on LTE deployments along with other capacity boosting methods in both current market view and the long-term view. First, uh, we'll talk about the transition from subscribers to connections. Uh, operators will soon begin counting total connections rather than subscribers as a single subs uh, subscriber may have multiple personal devices that all require wireless connection. These are the total of all basic and smartphone subscribers plus all the devices that connect to the operator's network including M2M -to -M connections. As market sees explosive growth over the next five years, network growth and total connections will provide a new revenue stream for operators to capitalize on. Now, smartphone growth is slow because smartphone penetration continues to climb. Uh, the tier one U.S. operator reported smartphone penetration of about 61.8% in the third quarter, which was up from 49.4% uh, a year ago. Smartphone penetration rises. Operators will search for additional growth drivers. It will pave the way for connected devices to take a more prominent role in driving revenue and subscriber growth. So I will need to shift their business models to promote this growth as traditional subscribers are limited in numbers. Uh, devices have a very large upside for growth as they, they are only just being introduced into the market. So connected devices are the future in the wireless industry as the market continues to introduce new data capable devices that operate on fast LTE networks. Consumption and smartphone adoption will continue to drive the wireless industry in the short term, yet with the increased speeds and capabilities of the LTE networks, along with the rising smartphone penetration, operators are looking to new potential verticals to increase revenue in future years. So operators are preparing for this growth through two drivers. First, operators are creating solutions in the security, automotive, healthcare, and utility sectors and launch shared data plans like AT&T and Verizon did in the third quarter. Uh, the fourth driver is consumer electronics. Uh, new launches in the coming years will spur this increased adoption. Uh, connected device net additions in the third quarter among the tier one U.S. operators total about 1.2 million. Graph on slide six here. Uh, this illustrates the growth in connected devices during the third quarter amongst the tier one operators uh, covered in our benchmark. Uh, AT and Verizon took an early lead in the connect devices market, mostly driven by their shared data plans. Uh, Spring Modal have seen less connected device adoption as they uh, require subscribers to open up an additional data plan for each device. The plans will remain a major driver of connected device adoption in the short term. The plan allows subscribers to add devices onto existing monthly plans. That's uh, currently the main trend that operators are reporting, yet the connected device portfolio will greatly expand over the next five years or so to a multitude of different devices that can operate over a wireless connection. AT&T continues to hold its slight lead over Verizon in terms of connected devices. Verizon led the quarter in net additions and year-to-year -year growth. Uh, we really benefit from its share everything plans with strong initial adoption and support of the growth of connected devices. Into its own shared data plans, AT&T is looking to drive revenue growth through expanding its presence in the key verticals like I mentioned earlier by tapping into that growth in connected devices. Uh, it's become a leader in connected devices by its early adoption initiatives and also by being the first to market with many new devices and concepts. Uh, ATS is focused on four main products uh, to grow over the next few years, those being uh, digital life, mobile premise, uh, mobile commerce, and a connected car. Millions have also be kind of direct, begun addressing the connected device market, uh, which operator offering its own version of a shared data plan. Uh, two operators lag behind the tier ones primarily due to their lack of resources and size. Uh, in addition, connected devices have yet to fully catch on with these smaller operators, which really focus more, more on the on the conscious subscribers looking for an inexpensive phone uh, rather than a tablet or other high profile data capable device. Switch to a connected uh, business model will be led by the US uh, major US operators. The two operators lead in 
in the deployment LTE networks, and their users typically consume the highest levels of data. Therefore, they'll be best positioned to capitalize on and monetize the growth in connected devices. These have become market leaders by remaining innovative and by bringing ideas and products to market ahead of their competition. Verizon are leading the way with AT targeting multiple new verticals, as we mentioned, uh, for device growth, and Verizon leading the push towards shared data plans. Verizon also reports uh, what is called ARPA, or Average Revenue Per Account, rather than the traditional ARPU, or Average Revenue Per User metric, after only a quarter of offering these shared data plans. So that gives you an indication of, of just how serious the operators are taking this trend. Uh, the reasons of this are that Verizon's business model is moving towards devices as opposed to subscribers as it becomes easier to add devices onto the wireless networks. Uh, others will soon follow Verizon's lead as it becomes increasingly difficult to distinguish individual subscribers from total connections. And within the next five years, each subscriber will likely own multiple different devices that connect to a network, making it less crucial to track a single user, but instead focus on tracking the entire account. And now, operators will continue to lag behind the Tier 1 players, uh, again, due to their lack of resources and size. Um, again, uh, but like we talked about earlier, that these uh, players typically focus on uh, the cost-conscious subscribers rather than those that are, are really um, using, utilizing a lot of data. Wireless and Metro PCS still do not offer tablets, instead rely on traditional subscribers to populate their network. Now, the transition to connections will be a slow process as there are still many hurdles to get by before growth begins to accelerate. Uh, the model is still in its infant stages and will take years to manifest throughout the wireless industry. Uh, most factors need to play out before the connect, connect device ecosystem reaches the point which is a significant portion of wireless service revenue. It will be a slow process led by the innovative leaders, Eliza and AT&T. These operators will set the tone for future connect device adoption, and the tier two operators will eventually follow suit and transition to business models that focus on connections rather than individual subscribers. Uh, now, first, for connected device growth to accelerate, the price structure will need to decline. The current plans, uh, including the shared data plans, are still priced too high to attract the majority of wireless subscribers. The device market is currently comprised of, of mostly early adopters and consumers who want a new device no matter what the cost. But this is like the tip of the iceberg in terms of the total connection potential, and operators will eventually lower the cost to add on additional data devices to the advantage of this emerging segment. The price increases will likely come after 2013 as operators complete their LTE network rollouts. Now, Eden Verizon already made a significant first step with their shared data plans that offer lower plan pricing to add devices onto the network. And with LTE widespread across the Operator's footprint, it will allow the operator to offer for more competitive prices without worrying as much about network congestion. The cause of delay is that customers will need to become better educated on the benefits and capabilities of having multiple connected devices. Now, most subscribers do not currently believe it's necessary to have anything uh, besides their smartphone. So, they will begin to focus more of their marketing efforts on the connected device segment in 2013 so that we become accustomed to seeing the different device options available. To them. The other piece is that shared data plans are brand new to the market, meaning the majority of the consumers still do not realize how easy it is uh, uh, to connect additional devices to their cellular plans. Uh, the full delay of rapid connection device growth is the device selection to date. As devices and options become available over the next few years, the adoption rate will quickly begin to accelerate. Uh, security, healthcare, and automotive features along with devices that have yet to be developed will attract a wide range of new connections to the market. Significant growth will likely take about two to three years before results are seen. The possibilities are endless once the connected ecosystem is better developed. We're going to be able to monetize this segment through various billion-dollar opportunities and verticals we mentioned earlier. We constantly adapt in the market in order to capitalize on new innovative developments. The key to success in a market driven by connections are transition, uh, first a transition to shared data plans to make it easier for users to add additional devices onto a single plan. A second, operators will need to alter their business models away from traditional basic and smartphone view. The third, operators will rapidly deploy LTE networks and lower pricing plans to boost connection device adoption. Fourth, uh, device prices will have to decline further to promote widespread adoption. 
And finally, operate again to push various connected device marketing campaigns to aid the average consumer on where the market is headed and the devices that are available. Moving to uh, topic number two, I'll now talk about the issues taking place in the prepaid segment. Uh, the market continues to saturate due to competitive pressures from the postpaid segment and has a large number of prepaid players. The segment has resulted in abnormally low net additions over the past two quarters. The operators covered in this benchmark lost a combined 281,000 in the third quarter of 2012 compared to 323,000 in the second quarter of 2000 to 1.3 million in the third quarter of 2011. Coming in low net additions are causing some players to lose mass subscriber numbers and search for ways to stay afloat. This is Leap and Metro PCS, who are typically strong prepaid operators. The graph on slide nine, uh, the prepaid net additions remain low in the third quarter as positive gains by tier one operators were offset by losses from the perennial tier two prepaid leaders. Prepaid subscriber growth remained much lower than in the past, with total additions down 78% year to year. A sign that the market is continuing to saturate. Certain devices and the availability of inexpensive postpaid plans continue to steal prepaid subscribers away. Market, the tier one operators continue to struggle in prepaid as well, dropping a combined 23,000 subscribers in the third quarter of 2012. Now, the market has been saturated for multiple quarters now uh, and is controlled by fierce pricing battles. Look at the leaders and laggards in the U.S. market as well as future implications. Now, to succeed in the prepaid market due to its inexpensive device offerings and plans, it remained a bright spot for the company in the third quarter of 2012 while its postpaid business underperformed yet again. Leader in prepaid growth was Verizon. Verizon continued to perform well uh, segment, although the majority of the net additions in the third quarter came from tablets and other non-smartphone subscribers that the group into its prepaid segment. Uh, the, the, the positive growth bodes well for Verizon's future in prepaid, including its ability to capitalize on the connected device segment within its prepaid market. Before were, uh, again, Metro PCS and Leap Wireless. These are the usual leaders in prepaid, yet they suffered high subscriber losses for the second straight quarter in the third quarter of 2012. Uh, this is the worst Metro PCS Metro PS has ever performed, hence a pending merger with T-Mobile was the right decision by the operator. Uh, Metro PC released some early uh, fourth quarter numbers that support the need for consolidation as the operator lost subscribers again, bringing the two losses in 2012 to almost half a million. Now, joining T-Mobile not only creates a powerful prepaid player that will challenge Sprint's lead, but will also eliminate an operator from the prepaid market. A former was Leap, who continued to report losses despite adding the iPhone in the second quarter of 2012. Now after PCS is out of the picture, Leap becomes a possible acquisition or merger target by other prepaid players. Uh, the need for further consolidation will be necessary if total prepaid net additions do not return to growth in 2013. A scenario here is either a merger between two Tier 2 operators or another acquisition by T-Mobile or Sprint to spend an already powerful prepaid line. The, the fun discussion topic, uh, we'll talk about CapEx investment in the wireless industry and driven primarily by network upgrades, specifically LTE upgrades. As of LTE, all mobile operators typically report a spike in CapEx that remains high throughout the first half of the deployment process before gradually declining. Now, AT, Sprint, and Verizon have spent a combined year-to-year -year increase of $1.3 billion on LTE deployments in the third quarter compared to third quarter of last year. Tier 1 LTE deployments will wrap up by the end of 2000, 2013, causing a deceleration in industry CapEx levels in 2014. However, it will continue, in, continue to invest in the networks through various methods to boost coverage and capacity. These methods include small cells, uh, Wi-Fi deployments, and acquiring additional spectrum bands to support uh, their LTE build-out. Graph on slide 12, uh, the Tier 1 operators in the third quarter continue to invest the largest amounts into their networks as the LTE networks are in the process of being deployed. T and Verizon's CapEx levels remain fairly steady year to year, 
is AT&T previously was investing in HSPA Plus, while Verizon had been rolling out LTE for seven quarters now. Sticks out on this graph with very high wireless CapEx growth year to year due to its initial LTE launch along with its other network vision upgrades. What operators planning to invest in past their initial LTE deployments? Well, they continue to improve span coverage within the existing markets, yet the bulk of that investment will be significantly lower. Now, this is the operators more resources to invest into other technologies that will help bolster the network. Equipment vendors will benefit from the upcoming investments in the small cells. Now, small cells are becoming a more popular method to enhance coverage uh, with AT&T, Sprint, and Verizon all announcing plans to deploy them in their high traffic markets. Another method to reduce network congestion, AT&T is probably the largest supporter of Wi-Fi with more than 3,000 hotspots as of the third quarter. Uh, this helped them relieve some of the network congestion from its largest markets so they can offer better service to their subscriber base. LTE Advanced will be the next technology in which operators invest. Uh, the equipment trend will begin with Verizon and AT&T in 2013 and will include other Tier 1 and Tier 2 operators in 2014. Uh, LTE Advance is basically a software upgrade from the original LTE deployment and therefore requires a much smaller investment compared to the initial rollout. So all major operators deploying their LTE, LTE networks to be LTE Advance ready uh, it will be easily upgradable in the future, which will cut down on their cost. Now, future investment, we need to look at how the spectrum position is changing among the Tier 1 operators. Uh, Verizon will implement its newly acquired AWS spectrum to help supplement its existing LTE network. Now, this investment, we believe Verizon will lower its CapEx spend over the next two years. Now, AT is investing in Project Velocity IP, which will provide it with additional coverage and capacity that will strengthen its position as a market leader. Uh, AT will increase its LTE coverage to about 300 million people by 2015, intensification process that will result in, in it operating the largest LTE network by coverage. Uh, the investment will drive wireless CapEx spend up over the next three years or so. Spread CapEx will remain high throughout 2013 as the network vision investment phase is completed that the addition of Clearwire will help keep CapEx spend high into 2014. It will help sprint lower CapEx investment in the long term. The short term investment will go towards a rapid build out of TD LTE network in the 2.5 megahertz spectrum band. The special increase, the high capacity network will provide sprint enough coverage to significantly reduce CapEx spend over the next five years. Other operators invest heavily in small cells and Wi-Fi offloading, among other capacity investments. Uh, Sprint, the largest spectrum holder in the U.S., if the, car, if the car deal is approved, although a vast amount of the spectrum will be in the 2.5 gigahertz band, which is more expensive to deploy compared to the lower frequency bands that AT&T and Verizon operate on. They're having about one third of the available spectrum and twice that of AT&T and Verizon, along with being backed by SoftBank. Is, is that Sprint's future is looking brighter. You will be able to offer the lowest prices and among the fastest network speeds due to spectrum position. T-Mobile's merger with Metro PCS along with its upcoming LTE launch will cause CapEx spending to spike in 2013 and 2014. You need to integrate Metro PCS's CMA subscriber base over the HSPA Plus and LTE networks and then repurpose that spectrum. The problem will take time and cost a lot. Uh, at the end result, will put it, uh, T Mobile in better position to challenge the other, other T1 operators. T Mobile will own about the same amount of spectrum as AT&T and Verizon. It operates about half the subscribers, meaning it will be able to dedicate more spectrum per subscriber than both AT&T and Verizon. Now, things up, we've discussed three of the major themes in the U.S. and Canada mobile uh, operating benchmark for the third, third quarter. First, discuss the transition from subscribers to connections. Next, we covered the prepaid segment and the challenges that operators continue to face to gain subscribers. And tell you the spending habits of the operators in terms of LTE, Wi-Fi, small cells, and spectrum. This industry had, has had many recent announcements, announcements that will change the competitive landscape within the U.S. market. Now, Verizon and AT&T both strengthened their position atop the industry through purchasing a large block, block of spectrum. Verizon's new spectrum came from the Spectrum Co. cable deal, while AT's came from the WCA band, typically for satellite radio. 
So these operators will continue to gain momentum from their shared data plans. Sprint is positioning itself to challenge AT&T and Verizon's lead, backed by SoftBank's funds and the acquisition of their partner Clearwire. Even T-Mobile, who seemed at times dead in the water since the AT&T merger failed in 2011, has used 2012 to recuperate. Now the operator is set to become a competitive force in 2013 with multiple major changes, including unlimited data plans, no subsidies, a cut with Apple for the iPhone, and most importantly, the merger with Metro PCS. All these will continue to play out in 2013, which should result in a very interesting year for the wireless industry. Now, the end of the mobile operated benchmark is the final product of a quarter of ongoing operator research at TBR. Slide, we detail the quarterly operator research agenda. These are topics that are discussed in detail in each of our operator reports and benchmark. Now I'll turn it over to Michael, who will discuss the quarterly research agenda topics uh, in a little bit more detail. As um, Scott mentioned the, and, and, and told throughout the presentation, uh, the themes that are uh, happening this quarter are ongoing themes in the marketplace that we have been observing and, and expect to continue to play out uh, in subsequent quarters throughout uh, 2013. Um, certainly the continued deployment of capacity in spectrum through uh, network updates at various stages of LTE deployment with, of course, AT&T and Verizon well ahead in that regard, Sprint coming next, and, and T-Mobile and Clearwire, uh, sorry, T-Mobile and Metro PCS, um, following on with a fast rollout. We see a high uh, capacity marketplace ready for the uh, data-rich uh, traffic uh, that's coming into the network. Um, as uh, a reference, we see a movement towards uh, emphasis on connections, uh, starting with connected devices uh, and the growth of that revenue stream. In fact, as the way we measure that revenue stream uh, is critical uh, for the new uh, ways in which the operators in the marketplace will, will profit and be successful. Uh, the densification of the network will continue as well, even as uh, LTE rollouts complete. Uh, the improvement of LTE coverage and uh, Wi-Fi uh, coverage for the different kinds of devices that are now um, being connected to the network um, will uh, be evidenced by additional Wi-Fi small cell uh, rollouts with uh, companies like AT&T uh, leading uh, in that regard in many ways. Um, and uh, on top of that, there is significant and intensifying price competition. Uh, limited data plans, shared uh, data plans are taking a lot of the uh, margin out of the market for the operators and the competition between uh, prepaid and postpaid uh, and uh, higher costs and lower cost operators to retain their subscribers. Uh, will only intensify, and we expect to see more variety in uh, in data plans throughout the uh, coming course as well. So we've covered these key points uh, in today's report, and we will continue to cover these topics as we go forward. Uh, thank you for your time, and thank you, Scott. And with that, I'd like to turn it back over to Allison for a Q and A. Thanks, Michael. So we've had a couple questions come in. I'd like to encourage anyone, if you have any questions on the information that was just presented, to send it through now. Um, the first question we had that come in is. Uh, in regards to shared data plans helping to drive connected device growth, when other operators follow AT&T and Verizon's lead? That's awesome. This is Scott. I can, I can take that one. <clears throat> so uh, AT&T and Verizon both have the largest uh, connected device segments up to this point, uh, so it means for them to move to the shared data plans ahead of everybody else. Uh, although we believe Sprint and T-Mobile will quickly embrace those same plans, um, although they're kind of dedicated to the unlimited data offerings. Um, they'll have their unlimited offerings for the next year or so before beginning to transition to the shared plans uh, that will help them drive that connected device growth. Uh, we believe that, that some of the Tier 2 operators will adopt the shared data plans as well ahead of Sprint and T-Mobile, uh, including uh, the recent launch of the shared data plans by uh, c -Spire. Okay. Um, the next question that came through was, What's the average number of connections per account in 3Q12? I can take that, and since we really, uh, only have that data point from Verizon, I'll quote Verizon, which is uh, suggesting 2.6 uh, connections per account, which they report is a 4% increase. So uh, imagine previous quarter, uh, 2.5. Um, 
that, of course, is uh, the postpaid uh, retail customer that they are uh, looking at. So um, that lies uh, perhaps um, uh, not a great deal. I think it's a good movement in the direction of understanding how to track um, something beyond uh, ARPU because that connection figure represents, uh, the account represents, could be a, a more than one multiple users, it's regardless of users. So it really doesn't tell us is it uh, one user with two devices, two users with a shared device, or as an average, um, there are shared uh, accounts where there are maybe as many as five or six users on a single account plan, um, and reconciling that into a, uh, an account figure and a device figure is work progress, never mind when we move to the world of uh, trying to account for M to M kinds of uh, connections uh, and, and devices. So um, we industry really is in a beginning process to try and determine how to evaluate uh, what the value is and the number of uh, connections is uh, per account or what an account really contains. Um, that said, we really want to applaud a Verizon for taking a step forward to begin to change the metric from our perspective so we can begin to understand what else is going on in the marketplace. I had to, another question come in as a follow-up, Michael. Um, what percentage of accounts had more than one connection in 3Q12? I don't really have the answer to that. We can uh, look into that and come back to you. Um, percentage of accounts with more than one connection uh, it's not something I have uh, seen readily reported, but we'll uh, take a look at that and come back to you. Okay. Uh, that are similar. Uh, the first one was, how will market consolidation impact the competitive environment? And five, will there be additional consolidation in the prepaid market? I don't know if you want to come to the answer to those two. Uh, this is Scott. I can maybe uh, touch on at least the prepaid side of it, and then um, you know Mike can uh, touch on some of it, too. Uh, from a prepaid Standpoint: The obvious example of of um, a company that might be consulted in, in, or be acquired. I touched on this earlier with, with Leap. Um, they're vulnerable the, the most on their continued subscriber losses. So if there was going to be any further consolidation, whether it was you know prepaid or otherwise, um, I would guess that uh, it would likely involve Leap. Whether or not that is a sprint based on on uh, them using some of the funds they got through SoftBank, uh, whether that's maybe a uh, a uh, Centlink who's um, you know kind of dipping their toe in wireless a little bit and has not been afraid to make um, large acquisitions themselves. Those would be a couple of um, companies that I could think of. Uh, I'm not sure if if Ray or AT and T and Verizon would have an appetite for that kind of a thing based on the way that they're headed. But um, that's kind of uh, my perspective. I don't know, Michael, you have any thoughts to add there? The most acquisitive ent entrant into the market now is uh, the Sprint SoftBank entity. Um, that said, we all have co collected a, a significant uh, debt load uh, from the transition, and that will take some time before they're in a position to further acquisitions. So we expect that to happen immediately, uh, especially now with the move on Clearwire as well. Uh, down the road, uh, that, that will be part, we believe, of uh, the uh, SoftBank uh, strategy. Um, to, to not shy away from acquisitions, and it does not. Um, that means AT&T and Verizon will consider uh, defensive moves uh, on, ac on the acquisition front, as they would not want to allow um, the third player to gain too much more uh, market share. Lastly, um, as, as Scott mentioned, there are smaller players that are just going to have trouble um, with uh, the dynamics in the marketplace, and they'll uh, they'll uh, increasingly become more attractive. Uh, acquisition targets, um, even a, a U.S. cellular uh, leap, um, folks like that that are in the next tier are going to have a hard time competing at the level of the of the uh, large players now that are in the marketplace. Um, I have one final question that came through: um, What value of a connection? That's a question. It depends on what the connection is, um, and as I mentioned, this is a, a turmoil. Uh, that's uh, currently happening in the marketplace. We're actually uh, uh, developing some models to uh, assess that, but it wholly depends on the type of connection. So the value of a uh, smartphone connection varies greatly from a tablet, varies greatly from an M2M -M connection. So um, there isn't one answer to that uh, to date. Um, we are uh, developing our metrics to be able to uh, 
not track the operators, but get ahead of them a little bit to understand how that average value of a connection could be, or some other way to formulate it so that we can get our hands around a, a number to use as an ongoing metric. So that was the last question that's come through. Um, so I want to thank Scott and Michael for your time today, and thanks everyone for sending through your questions and for joining us today. Uh, you can follow Scott, Michael, and TBR at the Twitter handles listed here. And I also gave you the slide share handle in case you wanted to go look at um, this presentation. will be uploaded by tomorrow and some of the others that we have in the telecom vertical. Uh, before we sign off, I'd like to ask you to take a brief survey when you're signing out. It's three quick questions just to get your feedback on the presentation and the presenters today. Um, and we'll be incorporating your feedback into our presentations as we move forward. Uh, I'm going to leave the chat function open for another few minutes to give you a last-minute chance to ask any additional questions or set up any additional conversations. And we all look forward to connecting with you again next quarter. Have a great day, everyone.